pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of the Republic, which stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming together on such short notice on the Community uh, Center. As you know, Kurt Miller put this group together when he was uh, first selectman. And we we're hoping that we're, we could wait until the new year to kick this off, but we figured it was a good idea to get everybody together to get some um, ideas and everything rolling. So the committee is now together and we need to call a motion to the floor for a chair. As you know, I cannot chair this as the first select woman. So I'd like to, to entertain a motion from the floor for a new chairman. I'll make a motion. I I'll second, hope that. I'll second it. I'm sorry. Can you say your name? Because I, I don't have every that was damn. Tim. I that have was a. Tim. By Tim Connor, second by Jim Baldwin. Was that you? Yes. Yes. Second by Jim Baldwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Kurt Miller, you're now the chair. All right, thank you very much, Madam First Select Woman. That sounds um, so All right, so we'll go. <laughs> I'm going to mute myself now. <laughs> That's the first for everything. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll skip back up to item number three just to see if there is any public comment. Um, I don't believe there is any public. Uh, so we'll go down to uh, item number six, which is open discussion. Um, you know, as you know, we had put this uh, out to the residents. <clears throat> um, we did it in a different way to try to gather a little bit more attention to it. Um, it was a little bit unconventional what we did. You know, generally we put things out, people don't pay attention to it unless we do it in a shocking way. Uh, I fully expected it to uh, not pass but I wanted to make sure that conversations were started. So we were able to get a lot of feedback from people. Uh, we were starting to initially get some things going. We organized this group of people, which I think is an exceptional group. Uh, I think we kind of touch all the needed bases of, of who we need to take on a project like this. Then unfortunately COVID hit. So that kind of put a, a halt to all of our planning. So. You know, at this point, we don't necessarily know what we will be able to build. We don't know what the uh, reality will be of COVID once it's said and done. Hopefully, uh, these vaccines are what they say they are. and We can go back to a relatively normal uh, way of life, what we had pre-COVID. Um, so I think it is prudent that we start to uh, put the plans in place. Uh, obviously, we don't know if we could still build uh, what we had initially talked about. Uh, I believe Mike passed out or uh, gave to Malia to send out to everybody on the group uh, kind of some talking points. So does everybody have that uh, that document or no? Good, good. Yeah, I think that was a, it was a uh, uh, put together just based on our conversations that I've had with Kurt and and other things that you know being familiar with uh, the whole process of going from. Uh, you know, thinking about what you want to an end product, there's a lot of things to be discussed, uh, including, you know, how you're going to finance it and who's going to pay for it and how it's going to get built. So, Kurt, you can take it from there. Let's keep falling out. So, um, so what, I, well, let's do this. Let's, uh, I'm just going to call you one by one and I'm just going to follow the way you're set up on my screen. And I just kind of want you to give the group a little bit about uh, your thoughts on the community center, uh, what maybe you think we should consider, what may work, what may not work. Uh, we'll try to take some notes and um, then we'll, we'll just kind of take it from there. So we'll use that as open discussion. So why don't we start uh, with uh, Bill, since you are first in my upper left-hand corner. Yeah, I, uh, I'm in, I'm in, favor of it obviously pending cost location things like that uh building versus leasing 
remains to be seen. There's a lot of numbers we've got to get first before we can make a decision. And the location of it, again, is probably going to be a key point in terms of the dollars. If you make, if you put something that more in a more accessible area versus a less accessible area, that's obviously going to, there's going to be dollars involved in it. The one thing, again, build versus, build versus lease, uh, again, depending upon the cost and the effect of the debt on the town. I mean, we've got our debt under control. We still have some more money that we need. We're going to need for roads. We've got some other capital items that we're going to have to go after. So the size of this thing in relation to the dollars and then the debt, that that's going to be that's going to be probably the biggest driver that I can see because the per capita debt we don't we want to keep it under control as much as we can in this town. With COVID, we're figuring tax collections may not be the greatest. So you you put all that together and it all comes down to the dollars. But yeah, I'm in favor of it. It's going to be depending on how much and where. And you know, and just to touch on that, want to build into it, you know not you know not discounting the statue obviously out front well yeah that's that's of extreme importance but uh when we did our refinancing and restructuring uh last year uh one of the things that we built into it uh and we took into yep. account was this community center and being able to pay for it uh, without any real impact nope. to taxes so if if you look at our debt service and you know, for the January meeting, we can have uh, this stuff provided. It's a downward slope. And you'll start to see out in years two and three, when we anticipated that this uh, project or hoped that this project, I should say, would have been completed pre-COVID, there is the money in the debt service to fund about $500,000 uh, a year towards this building. So that was one of our goals. Now that's going to require us to keep debt service level at, at the current uh, amount uh, for the next 15 or 20 years. So, you know, that's something that we need to uh, to discuss as a group and that will go towards, does it make more sense to, to lease? Does it make more sense to, uh, to purchase something? Uh, you know, do we enter into a public private partnership? What, you know, what do we do and what's the best way to do that? But we, our goal uh, when we did the restructuring and the refinancing was to have about $500,000 uh, give or take available to go towards uh, whether it be principal interest, lease payments, what have you, for this for this project. So, uh, Mike, you're next up in the upper right hand corner. Okay. So no, agreed. And I re and I remember the the pro the projections and yeah. So everybody has the list in front of them, so they know that uh, you know I put a lot of thought into what different things we have to talk about over this course of the initial few meetings. But more importantly, from my perspective, um, what I'd like to see is how do we leverage developers in, in, the, in our community that can help us, as Kurt said, offset some of the costs and possibly build additional uh, real estate development so that there's additional tax dollars coming in. And what do we do? What do we do with the existing building if we do go somewhere else? You know, is there a way that we can leverage one of the developers uh, to help pay for it or build additional real estate to build tax base, whatever? Um, you know, sitting on EDC as well, you know, you get frustrated because you don't see a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and there is stuff, but not a lot that people can see. So this is going to be a very visible project uh, and it's going to be something that people are gonna look at and say, my taxes are going up. And if we can figure out a way to leverage, I think that's what we wanna do. Sure, you're muted.
All right, you can hear me now. Yes. Um, all right, let me turn my volume up. Just bear me one second. So the, the two things that we talked about, um, uh, locations, at least initially, using this project as um, a kind of a springboard for mixed development was Triton Plaza and the area behind Stop and Shop. Uh, I had conversations with both landowners. They're both uh, interested in doing that. So we're going to need to touch base with both of those folks as we're making our um, our decisions. The other thing, <clears throat> we, we looked at uh, trying to partner with other communities to try to share the cost. So if we were to build uh, a new community center, let's say behind Stop and Shop, is that something that Beacon Falls would have interest in? Um, and in speaking with Chris Bielek and um, also now with, with Jerry Smith, both of them had some interest in that, so that's something that we need to take into account. And also with the YMCA closing in Ansonia, I had several conversations uh, with the folks from the YMCA who are extremely interested in some type of partnership uh, at the minimum coming in and managing and running the pool uh, up to actually us getting a site and them paying for the vast majority of the construction and then us leasing space from them for our programming. So uh, we have a few different options. I think uh, Mike has captured a lot of that in his uh, in this little cheat sheet that he made, which I think is really good. So I think we need to kind of use this document that Mike has put together and just kind of expand on it and use it as a guide to uh, keep moving us forward. Um, so next second row to the left is uh, Suzanne. Good evening, everyone. I agree with all that's been said so far. Um, as for the location, I think that for the, from the senior protect, protect, um, perspective, something more central or accessible, the two you just mentioned, the Haynes property and Triton Plaza do seem to be things that will be accessible for the seniors. If you put it in the hilltop, it may not be accessible to all. You know, that's always been, a, transportation has been an issue. And even for some families, perhaps. Because having it on the bus line would be even ideal. So, um, we talk a lot about that at our livable communities committee. Um, I know the YMCA was interested. They called me when they saw I was on the committee as well. Um, and I had worked with the Y for 12 years prior. My concern with them is whether they can raise enough money to do what they want to do. They do have the old building for sale, though, I see. Um, as far as the program items, what I didn't see on this list, and I'm not that it has to be, but I think through consideration is a kitchen. Is that something that you were looking for? I know Zach can probably attest to that there are programs that the seniors have with um, having meals. And if you could prepare meals, you could perhaps be a congregate site from um, the older American back dollars, and it's like three dollars, they get a full meal. Um, and then if you have uh, like the health department or the nurses come in to provide services with the podiatrists, um, et cetera, maybe having a more private area for that type of facility that will be um, accessible because I know that they do do programs with blood pressure screenings and other medical things, massages of late that have been popular. One of the um... One of the places that we went to look when we were starting to get ideas for this was uh, we took a tour of uh, Newtown, myself, Rory, a few other people. Um, and, you know, they do have that industrial kitchen set up, Suzanne, that you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. They have a program uh, through, I believe, it's Newtown High School where uh, they have special needs students who come in every day and they run a little mini cafe out of the place, which was actually really nice. Uh, they, they also have a kitchen available for uh, a kitchen that is attached to a large room where you can do weddings and, and things like that. So one of the programs that I know I talked with Zach and Mary about this, while it may not be an industrial sized kitchen, but just uh, some kitchen equipment where you can come in and do some of those cooking classes. Oh, yeah. Where, you know, learn how to cook Italian, learn how to cook Chinese, um, you know, a wine and dine type thing, uh, which I think would be great. So. You know, I think at this point, all of these things need to be considered. Um, 
And then obviously based on the cost, we'll need to make some hard decisions as, as to what we keep. But I think all ideas at this point are great ideas and we should put them all out there and then just work our way through to see what we can, we can ultimately have. Yes. And also I was just thinking, as you mentioned, uh, the cooking classes, getting the children involved in that with the Yale Griffin Prevention Research Center, they do, they have a lot of initiatives with um, trying to help healthily, et cetera. So there could be a lot of opportunities there too. Yes. And, you know, I think our goal, or at least my goal, and I mean, hopefully everybody shares that is to make this a true multi-generational destination place mm -hmm. where a whole family could come and there's activities for everyone, whether it's the kids, the parents, the grandkids, whomever. Um, you know, we have a lot of different family mixes in Seymour. Uh, so we want to make sure that if a grandparent is the, the primary caretaker, that there's something that the grandparents can do while the kids are at basketball or at swimming or something like that. So uh, I think the more creative we are, the, the better it'll be, the more use that, that we get. All right, so next in line, uh, Tim Connors. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, I think all the points are good. Like I said, we were we did go to the Newtown one. They had a lot of nice things, um, a lot of wasted space also. So we got to take that into consideration when we do, you know, our design and when, what we're looking for. Um, but a lot of the items that, that are on here, um, I think we need it definitely need, but we have to make it a, a group effort that everyone could enjoy it. Like Kurt said, you know, from, you know, toddlers all the way up. Um, one thing I always brought up was um, even like, you know, gyms are going in and out constantly. Now they're, they're dropping like flies, even with COVID. Um, a lot of them are closing up, even like the YMCA. If, if we do do something of, of a gym sort, we should, you know, again, this is looking into the future. It should be, not that it should be a money-making process but we, we need to cover costs also so we got to take that into consideration on a lot of those things and, and again i think we could we could produce a good amount of money and still be accessible to everyone in town but that's that's pretty much what i have right now um you know one of the things that i think is that is holding our community services back now is the lack of space um, all right so, and I agree with you. I think Newtown did have a lot of uh, wasted space. That's why I think it's important that we have, you know, Suzanne and Zach, because, um, you know, they're kind of right on the front lines of the programs and things that we're trying to do for the seniors and for the kids, for the young adults um, and everything else. So I think that that's really important that we have that, that we maximize all the space um, that we do. And, and the other thing too, to keep in mind, I think Suzanne mentioned this uh, as well, um, I think we should also look at the community center because of the size and depending on the location um, as a uh, emergency shelter spot. So I think that we need to uh, just take that into some consideration. Uh, you know, with the middle school, we have the middle school, we have Chatfield school. Um, you know, we obviously need to have different sides of the river covered, but uh, this may be a good, uh, a good place to have that because we can put a lot more people depending on the size of what we build, particularly we have a kitchen and so on and so forth in there, so. Correct. Excellent. All right, uh, next in line, uh, Fred. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'm going to repeat some of my comments. I do want to commend the Board of Selectmen and Mr. Miller at that time for moving forward with proposing a new community center to the community for the community. Our town certainly de deserves a modern, safe, and well-planned community center rather than the old school that it's in and the hazards and health issues that have plagued that school. I've been a member of the Board, Board of Education for some 31 years, as some people know. And in my early years, I heard many complaints from staff members about the health of the building that the community center is now in. And I was certainly pleased when the Board of Education moved out of that building some years ago, around the year 2000, 2001, when we moved into the new middle school. So this project is long overdue. And I, I'm glad that the Board of Selectmen took the step to appoint this committee. I do want to say that an ancillary issue to the community center, I think, is 
consideration of what to do with the old annex school. There's been a lot of discussion, I know, by the Kurt Miller administration about the old annex school where Valley Health is located and the Board of Ed offices. Perhaps we can work on phasing that out also because I know that building is a prob very problematic and has plagued the administration in working with that building. Board of Education offices could be moved, I think, to the high school ultimately, and Valley Health could be, maybe be relocated even into this building as part of a community resource. Something to just think about. I know that's not on the table, but something to think about. I agree with Suzanne. I think a, a kitchen in the, in the community center would be a, a great asset for the three, the three generations that we're talking about, to use the middle, uh, middle age folks and parents, as well as the elderly, the older folks. I'm very excited about this community center going forward. And I do think that its location should be toward the center of town. The center of town is the government seat of the community, is the center of the economic engine. The community center will bring people into the, into the center of town, even from out of town. And the local businesses in the center of town, the small businesses could share in some of the economic benefits of people being brought into the community. Once again, I, I think this is a great project. I look forward to working with everyone. And I thank everyone for serving on this committee from, from the perspective of the Board of Education. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Fred. And you know, Fred brings up a couple um, very good points. Some of the other conversations <clears throat> that we've had are how can we move uh, some people around to maximize the space that we have and start to offload some of these older, more expensive buildings. Um, you know, we did have uh, a potential purchaser or a, a person who was interested in taking over, uh, you know, 98 Bank Street, uh, but we would need to facilitate a move with the Board of Education and with Naugatuck Valley Health. <clears throat> so um, I had some conversations uh, with the folks at Naugatuck Valley Health, just very tentative about the potential of moving. Uh, they certainly would not be against that if they could end up in a, a location that they thought was better suited for them. So we actually talked about the potential ability of adding a small section of the community center um, for their use, uh, kind of a separate building per se. Also had some conversations with the Boys and Girls Club um, about the potential of them building their own clubhouse uh, over in that area and then having some use of some of our facilities like the pool uh, basketball court, some of the things like that. So, you know, the Boys and Girls Club uh, does take care of well over 100 Seymour kids a day. Um, and I think that would be a very good mix. And again, we have those kids there. Um, I envision parents coming to pick their kids up at the Boys and Girls Club. Our community services department is now lining up all these programs starting at five or six o'clock. They come to pick their kids up and then there's programs for the kids and for the parents at night. So I think it's it's a great feed. So um you know, I think there is a lot of good opportunity to maximize the usage of this building and with the cost savings and, you know, Jim Baldwin and, and Brian um, and Tim can probably talk um, a little bit more directly about this, but the amount of money we spend just to maintain some of these older buildings uh, is quite substantial and that money could be used to offset extra debt service um, or lease payments or what have you to cover the moves of some of these some of these people. So um, next, uh, Jim. Thanks, Kurt. Um, I think I'd, I'd like to start off with um, a couple of things is, you know, how the building would be utilized in layout and things like that. Um, as uh, Tim mentioned earlier, when we reviewed other community centers and everything else, there's a, a lot to, to really be thought about there on how, how to best structure the actual programs in the building. But I guess I'd like to start off with the location and to build off of uh, uh, Bill's point and Fred's point, I, I would agree that the downtown area would probably work the best. Um, that being said, through our analysis, we realized that you know our old uh, middle school, we, we really don't have a big enough site there. So that school has been plaguing us and costing us a lot of money. We all know that. So we probably look to maybe uh, bring that into the private sector, um, something similar to Maple Street School was, 
where we could use, we could draw revenue off of it and turn it into a, a nice area that would uh, enhance and work with the town maybe in the residential or mixed use development. Um, I'd like to bring up the point again. I'm probably not inclined to look at the Tri Town Plaza only because you know it's a very difficult. The owner's proven to be very difficult, and the other thing is um, that is on our Derby Avenue corridor where we really look to hopefully have some economic development. Um, I know it's been slow, but uh, bringing a community center up into that area, it seems like we'd be giving up a lot of our economic development um, uh, process for uh, potential gain. Um, I wanna bring up the point of um, over behind Franklin Street where we looked at carefully. And some of you might know that uh, Kurt had appointed me. I'm the uh, current chairman of the uh, regional planning uh, component of the COG. And we just had a meeting on Tuesday and some discussion was held. Uh, and there's a program right now that's fully funded by the state and we have engineers working on it. And it's looking at uh, areas along flood corridors. Uh, and one of them is the Naugatuck River. Um, and that might have some potential benefit for us for the development of the corridor between Franklin Street and all the way up to Beacon Falls. Um, Haynes owns that project property. Uh, it abuts uh, all the way to 42 where ONG has property and the state of Connecticut finishes it off. Um, so if we're able to maybe use some of that and maybe look into um, getting some of that program to focus on what we're trying to do. So the state would have some uh, um, funding in the infrastructure. Um, that might be really beneficial to the town of Seymour. I mean, it's basically, we all know how that works. They, we ha they have a, a company do a design and a program and everything else. And rarely do we ever see anything coming out. But you know what? We meet, uh, Seymour in this project and that corridor meets all the criteria that this is uh, geared toward. So I'd like to see, um, maybe we could reach out to some of our state reps. We could utilize the COG and really maybe uh, look into this so we might be able to get some assistance. Um, the, um, but that location um, would be very good. Uh, it would service, it'd be in our downtown. It may, which someone brought up earlier, I think Kurt, you did, may be able to look at regionalizing with Beacon Falls. I hope some uh, offset some of the costs there. Um, and again, we'd have to re, you know, revisit the option of whether we're gonna build the project. And we all know if we go out and build it, we're gonna be subject to prevailing wage, which our cost per square foot is probably gonna be somewhere in the range of $400 a square foot where if we uh, partner with a private developer, we could probably bring that down to about any order to $250 a square foot, $300 a square foot. So we could get a lot more bang for our buck if we go back to considering a lease, public-private lease option. Um, and also uh, there are plans in that area behind Franklin Street where a fully constructed uh, athletic field can be built uh, soccer field, football, however you want. And that could be built and not necessarily be tied to the community center. However, it could be built because that could be built in the floodplain. And that's one of these uh, projects that the state's looking at. It's something that can be built um, and not uh, you know, uh, destroy, uh, you know, if the river were to flood or whatever, we're not losing you know, buildings or anything like that. Um, I agree with uh, Fred that we definitely have to look at offloading a couple of our older buildings or doing something with them to, so we're not maintaining these uh, old projects. And uh, again, I, I, that's the main thing. So I really like to look, see where we can get assistance um, and, and uh, maybe we can get some, uh, you know, a little bit more bang for our buck and a little help. So that's about it, what I have, have to uh, say right now. Again, you know, I, I defer to the actual programming and everything else to, to the people that, you know, really deal with the uh, public and what our needs are. I mean, obviously we know the pool is probably gonna be the big anchor. But, um, so that's, that's really what I have to say for tonight.
Thank you, Jim. And just to build off a few of Jim's uh, comments, uh, we've had a few people that have reached out um, once this kind of went public and people started talking about it, instantly showing interest in the, the current community center and asking what we would be interested or what we plan to do with it because they had an interest in potentially purchasing it. Uh, I think people see the success of the old Maple Street School, how that has turned out. Uh, and I think there are people that are definitely interested in doing something like that at the middle school based on its size. Um, Larry Janeski um, has his uh, <clears throat> architect builder who does all of his buildings. Uh, Larry and this gentleman reached out and offered just to help with some just some free um, stuff initially as we were having some conversations um, you know particularly when we were talking about the space at the current community center and what could we do whether it be retrofitting the current building which i, I think we all agree doesn't really make sense uh, to be way too expensive it wouldn't give us the bang that we're looking for but he went through and just very quickly very crudely um, kind of slapped up a mock-up of what a building might look like um, it we think would be too small for kind of what we're all talking about. Uh, there would still be some issues with parking, but I think it's something that we should probably revisit as well, a little bit more serious, um, the potential of leveling the community center, the current community center, building something new there. Obviously, we have control of the property. Um, I would assume leveling it would be much cheaper than acquiring land if we were to go that way. So um, I think that that's something that we should we should kick around. And then, you know, uh, Jim mentions the soccer field. Um, there is, I was approached by uh, a person who has one of the premier teams in the area. Um, he is Brazilian. He's got backers uh, from Brazil. He's got a huge program, uh, several hundred kids, and they're kind of gypsies at this point. They don't have really a home facility. They use the facility in Woodbridge now, if you've used it, but that's kind of old and beat up. And he is looking to put in uh, if nothing else, a turf field with lights and bleachers someplace. So something like that might fit in nicely uh, to Jim's point. I mean, obviously, we would have to defer first preference uh, to that program, but I think it's something that we could also use and get some advantage on, particularly uh, with the abundance of sports teams that we have uh, in Seymour, uh, whether it be high school, middle school, just giving them the opportunity to have places to practice during the day and obviously freeing it up nights and weekends for the, for the club to use it. So um, some really good points there. Uh, Zach, you're up next and you're probably the person that gets to uh, gets to speak the most with regards to programming because I know that you represent uh, the community services department and all the great ideas uh, that you guys have been coming up with. So why don't you give us a little Zach? Yeah, so hi everyone. Um, you know, it got me fired up, honestly, talking about the new building, talking about possible field. It really is a great thing. I'm very excited to be part of the committee. Um, kind of a little background where we're at right now at the community center. Um, the current building we're in right now, obviously everybody knows it's old, but at times we kind of feel like handcuffed right now. Um, we're trying to expand programs for kids, for seniors, for adults, trying to run various different things. And right now with the space that we're kind of hitting like a roadblock with it. Um, and I mean, the schools have been great letting us use their basketball courts in the pools, but it would be just awesome to have our own to be able to offer more programs um, to, for the residents and honestly too, depending on the gym, if we decide to get a multi-purpose or the pool, then you're looking at possibly holding travel basketball tournament <clears throat> type of events as well. Some events and you're renting out the space, bringing people to town and kind of what Fred said before is he's then people that go out to the small businesses, which I think would be great. Um, pretty much just, yeah, I mean like we're the building we're in right now, we kind of feel a little bit handcuffed with the programming. So a new building I think would be great. Um, definitely excited. And um, yeah. Excellent. And you know, to, to, to Zach's point, uh, and this is something that we need to keep in mind as well, it's not only building the building and what the cost of the building is going to be, but we also need to understand how much it's going to cost each year to maintain the building and also how much it's going to cost each year to run the building. And by run, I mean staff. Obviously, we have a very small uh, four-person staff at the community center. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to manage a building of this size, regardless of how big we build it. 
uh, with just four people. I think we're going to need to look at additional staff. Obviously, we're going to need, you know, aquatics folks. Uh, we're going to need maintenance folks and, and everything else. So the one thing I, I want to say and before we before I go to Brian is uh, Rory and Marie and myself picked everybody on this committee for a very specific reason. Um, you know, we looked at all the things that we thought we would need to make the building of this uh, community center and it's, it's launching very successful. And every single one of you fill a very specific role. So we have kind of the programming mix. Uh, we have the finance mix. We have the building mix. Um, I think we cover all of those bases. We have representatives for the kids. We have representatives from the seniors. So, you know, to, to Zach's point, I'm very excited as well um, to kind of get this up and moving. And I think we've got a great group of people um, that are going to be able to get us there. So, uh, Brian, anything you want to add? Yeah, thank you, Kurt. Uh, I'm excited to be on this. I think it's um, well needed in town. Um, looking forward to seeing where this goes. Um, parent of young children, and I have a lot of friends that have young children. Um, every one of them that I talk to uh, is in favor of a new community center and is looking forward to a, a new community center and voted in favor of the last uh, of the last uh, action at the uh, at the election, um, or at least a year ago. Um, I think one of the things that that uh, it sounds like uh, everybody's in uh, agreement with with uh, is. Uh, I think a pool is an absolute, um, especially now that the YMCA closed down. Um, I think the uh, the area, the town, um, is in real need of a community pool. Um, on top of all the other things that I that I agree with, which is the gym and the classrooms and the and the commercial kitchen, I think um, a lot of that can turn into some sort of revenue stream, which might offset the costs that. Um, Kurt was talking about with with staffing, which is obviously going to be unnecessary. So uh, I'm looking forward to um, working through all this, working with you guys. Obviously, it all comes down to money eventually, and I'm looking forward to exploring some public and private partnerships to see how it can benefit both. I think there are some um, good opportunities where um, uh, a private entity could benefit from having this within um, whatever development they have. And obviously the, the, uh, the town can have uh, a myriad of benefits uh, with the same arrangement. So I look forward to that. Thank you. Excellent, thank you, Brian. Um, anybody else wanna add anything? I wanna give everybody a chance to talk and then if anybody wants to circle back, make any additional points. No? Oh. Go ahead. The one question I would just toss out, I, I think we're all in agreement that it's a good thing. It's going to help the town. It's going to help the people that live in the town. It's going to uh, hopefully generate revenues if we can have the right kinds of activities. Um, I guess now be a matter of deciding the, the priorities. Does location uh, come first and then we look to build or uh, lease? or you know the size of this kind of like a punch list almost since we're starting from virtually zero we know we've got a bad old building downtown it's going to go away hopefully just as hopefully 98 bank street will but i think now do we take the step and focus in on location first and then figure going to what are we going to do build or buy and that would involve obviously i guess architect engineers studies whatever but I think probably there is the um, going looking at Mike's list that he put together. Should these be ranked, you know, one through whatever? Well, that's Bill. I, that's the next thing I was going to go to. Um, you know, when we start talking about our our upcoming meeting in January, you know, where did we want to kick this off? And did we want to start with first determining what the best location? would be and then looking at options should we narrow it down to let's say three different locations and i'm, I'm just going to make them up um tri town current and behind stop and shop the password and, for you and then analyze each Start of the three spots whether it's lease purchase whether it's buy 
um, public-private partnership, what have you, and then from there determine the best spot and then go forward? Or what does everybody think is the best course of action? Are all those um, all those sites still in play? Have we spoke to um, Tritown? Have we spoke to the Haineses? Since it's been a, it's been a while, I know since the last time we spoke about it. So I don't know if has anybody been in touch with anybody. Uh, I have not specifically spoken to any of them since COVID came around. Okay. Um, but I, I know in in speaking at least initially with uh, Ron Spector at Tritown Plaza and uh, you know Tommy Haynes with the area behind Stop and Shop, they both had interest in using the community center as anchors uh, for mixed use development. So, um, you know, how much of that has changed with COVID, I don't know, but we can certainly circle back. I know Mike has um, a, a somewhat of a relationship with Ron, so he could have those conversations with him or speak in a little bit more detail. I have no problem talking uh, to Tommy Haynes to find that out. Um, and then obviously the community center we control, so. Yeah, that might be a good idea just so we're not spinning our wheels if they're not even interested anymore. Yeah, I know uh, Ron, Ron Spector is in, uh, interested, but it's not on his property. And that's part of the problem with Ron. You know, he really makes more sense to, to take the property behind him, the uh, Galuzzi Anderson property. Um, and I don't, I don't like the way he goes about his uh, ideas of how he wants to finance it. However, he does... He did make a comment to me about, I'm very interested in the mixed use development on the site and willing to put $30 million into the site for a mixed use development if I can get the community center. As I've said to Kirk previously, you gotta put it in paper and you gotta lock them down and you gotta get a commitment. That's right. been the hardest part for 20 years. <laughs> you know, if Tom Haynes said that, I'd have more belief that it'll happen. Well, uh, can I just add to Kurt, I did speak with Tom Haynes yesterday, um, not uh, specifically about this. Um, I did speak with him in regards to the program I mentioned before that's uh, in the COG um, that he's uh, very interested in because again, uh, some of us were in a meeting that where we did look at all the uh, uh, particulars of that project, uh, that parcel, I should say. Um, and what they've been waiting for, occur, as you know, through your entire administration and previous administration, has been the um, a little bit of infrastructure help in connecting Route 42 to Route 67. Now, we've all been around and we know that that's been on the table for a very, very long time. And we've seen nothing come through. But uh, that's what I was speaking with Tom Haynes for because his uh, their plans has always been, and they brought it to us uh, through the years and still, that they are planning on moving into that development area as soon as they're through with Quarry Walk. They, they've owned it for some time. They look at the rock and all that as part of their business. So it probably would be worth it to maybe speak to them again and there is immediate property available uh, behind Stop and Shop where they currently run a uh, rock uh, uh, rock operation. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I was going to say too, if we take maybe, it to a mixed use it's a development case of... like that, um, one of the things you know we had talked about, if you look at Quarry Walk up in Oxford and the level of or the amount of tax dollars that that brings into the to the town of Oxford and you compare how much bigger our area is, if we would just get the equivalent of what Oxford has um, behind our, next to our community center, it would pay a huge portion of the principal and interest payments. So there certainly is a lot of value there. Uh, I wanna say it was in the fall of 2019 uh, through the efforts of Rick Dunn and the COG, uh, Jerry Smith and myself met with the governor's staff uh, up at the Capitol specifically to talk about that connector road. Um, we discussed about the regional opportunities. We talked about safety issues with the ability to get police cars, ambulances, fire trucks, what have you quickly from downtown Seymour to downtown Beacon Falls. Um, so I think if something were to be put behind Haynes and I'm not putting, you know, picking one spot over another um, and we were to able, we were able to enter into some type of regional um, agreement with Beacon Falls, I think there would be 
the opportunity, uh, a better opportunity to get some state funding to help put that road in. So there's some. Maybe it's a case of, from what I've been, what I've been hearing, it's, you know, looks like it's coming down to Tritown versus the Haynes property. And maybe to look at those, contact the owners, revisit the issues with them, if we can, maybe we have a better idea for next month's meeting of location. And if something else should surface, I mean, I can't tell you uh, to one comment, Davis Road being on this side of town, being far, being what's called far away for some people, uh, wanting to keep it central. I don't know if the Housatonic wire site would ever be big enough for parking in the size of a building, or if anybody else in, thinks of another place to, to put the thing. But I think we've got two candidates with Haynes and Tritown that maybe prior to the next meeting, some, you know, a little bit of legwork and phone calls get made and see what's what. But to Mike's point also, I mean, the only yeah, I uh, chasing, is... chasing an out-of-state, an out-of-stater. You... Yeah, that's, that's, that's part of the problem that Ron is not, but he is active. He still, he still communicates. The, the difference between the two properties, I think, in my view is Tritown will be quicker to create a tax base if it happens. Um, we know Tom will do something but he's still got to blow that mountain up. And that's probably 10 years down the road before you see that, any kind of real development there. I mean, he's, he's been at uh, Derby Avenue site for, you know, better part of 10 years now. And he's just starting to make headway because Oxford is uh, basically, there's no rock left. Um, well, so I would, have, I would have to say the caveat, the caveat to the Tritown site is that Ron Spector does not have ownership of the entire right. parcel and he does not control it. And there would be have to be a taking of two residential properties in a zone change that would uh, have to happen for that site to even be considered. That's I, think, um, I think one of the big are things- are we, looking at, are we looking at it one? Is is whether or not? But hold on, Bill. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I, the one thing that that keeps coming to my mind is whether or not we um, need or want an athletic field, um, because half of these sites are not just going to fit another athletic field. The community center is not going to fit one. Um, I don't even know if the Tritown Plaza <laughs> will, will fit one, and I don't know if Haynes would be interested in using up all that land for an athletic field. It takes up a lot of room. So um, my personal opinion is we got to figure out a wish list and pin that down. And then we can, at the same time, figure out where the, where the sites that can fit that wish list right. uh, works. Just to uh, tap on to uh, Brian's uh, comment, we probably should build a program to understand the size of the building and adjacency for parking and other things that we want to put there on that site so that we know. Yeah. Um, you know, my discussions with Kurt, we were in the 40, 45,000 square foot building. You keep adding stuff to this, uh, you know, you're up at 50, 55,000. It's a big building, even two stories. But you got some, uh, you know, you got some height to the building as well because you're going to have basketball court and a pool need, need to be uh, pretty good uh, heights there. So. You know, we should probably do a program and see where, where we are. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Go ahead, Mark. I agree. I was going to jump in, but Mike and Brian jumped in about the programming needs. I think we should concentrate the next meeting on programming needs and talk about location again. Keep, keep that in the background, but I think we have to decide exactly what we want in this building. Okay. So... Makes sense. It, so if I'm, if I'm hearing everyone, <clears throat> why, don't, why don't we do this for our meeting on, I believe it's the seventh, we're gonna to get to that in a second. Um, let's all come prepared to talk about programming. In the meantime, between now and then, uh, between Jim, Mike and myself, we will reach out and have some conversations uh, with Ron Spector and with Tom Haynes, because those seem to be the two 
locations of, uh, at least initially, uh, that make sense and just get their interest again. Make sure that they're still interested, um, how committed they would be, that type of thing. And then we can make a decision after we've talked about programming, what might work, what might not work. Uh, we can have uh, Mike's volunteer to do some free sketches, which is very generous of him. Um, <laughs> Um, to see okay. what may or I mean, I don't mind doing it. <laughs> what may or may not fit on some of these um, properties to that point, based yeah. on the programming that we choose. Yeah, we need to do some block diagramming just so we understand it. Yeah. So, all right. Sounds so, like a plan. So, with that said, let's uh, move on to item number seven, <clears throat> which is our meeting dates um so we are tentatively set up it looks like for the first thursday of every month so is that day good for everybody yeah yeah, yeah that's what's gonna work okay and we are today is the third all right so we have the, we have the appropriate amount of time for the seventh which is good um, all right, so then I'll entertain a motion to approve the community center building committee meeting dates uh, for 2021 as the first Thursday of each month. Moved. Motion Second. by Brian. Second. Second by Bill. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, if I may, and I would add to the motion, direct the chairman to file the schedule with the town clerk. Yes, thank you, Mr. Danik. Rory will do that first thing tomorrow morning. He's still lurking about somewhere on this call. So um, <laughs> any other comments? Nope, okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Stained? Okay, so moved. All right, so the last thing uh, is public comments. I don't believe we have any public. Any last comments, thoughts anyone would like to make before we adjourn? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Absolutely, Fred. I don't know what the thoughts are of the first select woman, but the agenda calls for election of officers. I'm not sure what the thought was. It's plural. Uh, I would suggest that we consider a vice chair in case the chairman is, is absent. You are 100% correct. Rory actually sent me a nasty text asking why we didn't do a vice chairman and a secretary. And I guess I am a little out of practice. So <laughs> uh, if we could, let's move back to uh, item number five. And I'll entertain a motion for a vice chairman. I'd make a motion to uh, nominate Fred Stanek as vice chairman. All right, we have a, a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Hearing no other nominations, uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Abstained. So carried, and for the record, um, note Mr. Stanek's abstention. At this point, we'll entertain a motion for a secretary of the committee. No motions. I'll make a motion to nominate Suzanne as secretary. No, thank you. No, you can't do it. Somebody's got to do it. No, I can't do it. I'm too busy. I, I'm just too busy. Um, well, uh, the first select woman is uh, still on. Um, I nominate Tim Connors. Yeah, well, I, I was gonna, for that either. I'm sorry, I really don't. Uh, Madam Select Woman, I was going to ask: Would it be possible to have um, one of the current uh, board secretaries? Absolutely. So I think because of the importance of this project, um, I think there's going to be a lot of scrutiny. I think it makes sense to, uh, and I'll work with Bill um, and Anne-Marie on this to try to get some money. I think we should bring in 
a, a real board secretary, someone that can take the minutes um, and, and get that out uh, again, because of the, the importance, the scrutiny that this is gonna see, I, I think it makes sense to have that. Like Monica? Uh, well, Monica would be exceptional, yes. Yeah. Or even, or even Malia. I think she would be a good choice. Yeah, Monica or Malia, I think would be very good. I think good she'd be a good choice. Available. Okay. So does it, anyone have an issue with that? Assuming, yeah. No. You know, Bill can loosen the purse strings a little bit and get us a few dollars <laughs> for that. Yeah, we'll, there. Make it, there. we'll make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I asked for some for the permanent building committee, he said he didn't have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Right, so, uh, Anne Marie, is there anything that you wanted to uh, to add before we adjourn? I just want to say thank you to everyone for taking on this big responsibility and saying yes to continue growing our town and our community center. This is something that our town definitely needs. And I think we have all the right people on the board where I feel we have all the right people on the board and I can't wait to see what this board does with it. Thank you all so much. And before we adjourn, um, if everyone could, if you don't mind forward to, to, uh, to Rory initially, uh, just your email and a cell phone number. Just so we have, con I believe we have it for everybody, but just to make sure we have all of the correct emails and cell phone numbers to make it a little bit easier to get in contact with everybody. Uh, while we'll be meeting once a month, I think there will be a lot of work done in between. Uh, I envision that we will break up into subgroups based on our, uh, you know, kind of our backgrounds. Uh, you know, obviously Suzanne and Fred, myself and Zach probably won't be too involved in the building discussions per se. Um, we'll leave that to the professionals that we have. Maybe we'll focus more on the programming, uh, things like that. We'll just kind of use everyone's expertise uh, to the maximum. So if you can make sure that Rory has that just to verify, uh, we could uh, move forward that way. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Come on. So motion moved. by Suzanne, second by Mike. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stained. Hi. Uh, motion passes, and we will mark the meeting closed at 8:01 p.m. Thank you very much, everyone, and we'll be in contact uh, via email over the next couple of days as we're Thank starting you. to put things together. Um, and again, we'll we'll use group emails um, as best we can without breaking FOI, um, and uh, we'll just keep moving forward. Sounds great. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Take care.